Hello everyone, I hope you are well. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Sarah and I have been living out of a suitcase for around a year now. I'm really excited to make this video today because Waterton holds a special place in my heart. The summer of 2019, I went to work at the Prince of Wales in Waterton Lakes National Park. When I looked at the photos for this place, I thought that it was too good to be true. It literally looks like a castle on a hill, but the pictures really do this place justice. It is incredibly beautiful. It is the smallest national park in the Canadian Rockies, and also, fun fact, Upper Waterton Lake is the deepest lake in all of the Canadian Rockies. This touristy rocky town is great if you're looking for something a bit less touristy compared to Banff and Whistler. There are tons of hikes, beautiful lakes, and it's just a very peaceful town with an amazing view. Since it is less touristy, it's often missed by travelers, so if you're looking for more of an authentic Canadian Rocky Mountain experience, this is definitely for you. I think that it is definitely one of Canada's hidden gems. There are tons of activities to do in the summer. Waterton doesn't have a touristy winter season, and the summer season goes from late May to early September. It is a two-hour drive south of Calgary, and a 20 minute drive away from the USA border. It borders the state of Montana. So here are my top 10 things to do for the ultimate experience in Waterton Lakes National Park. So number one is Crypt Lake. This is probably one of the most epic most popular hikes in Waterton. It was actually voted in the 20 most thrilling hikes in National Geographic a few years ago. The hike starts off with taking a boat to the beginning of the trailhead. You can't actually get there on foot, so it starts out pretty cool. It's not a hard hike, but it is pretty long, so prepare for that. It's about a 17 kilometer round trip. There are tons of waterfalls, including a 600 foot waterfall. And when you are hiking up, you can view the waterfall from a distance. And then when you come around on the hike, you actually stand on top of the waterfall, which is insane. If you are scared of heights, I would not recommend standing right on top of it. But if you're not, definitely do it. It's so cool. There's everything from crawling through a cave at one point, a ladder built into the cliff that you have to crawl up on to get into the cave. There's a part where you walk on a cliff and just hold onto a chain. And then you end the hike up at Crip Lake, which is this beautiful turquoise color lake. And you can just jump in, cool off, and then start your hike back down. And then the boat picks you up at the bottom. So speaking of boat rides, that brings me to number two, a guided boat tour to the USA. So the cool thing about the town of Waterton is the lake that it is on is half in the USA and half in Canada, the same lake. The USA side in Montana is called Glacier National Park. So they do a boat tour that leaves from the Canada side and it's about a two hour round trip and you actually get to go into the US, which is pretty cool. And you get to see where the lines drawn in the mountains of the border and they do like a 30 minute stop on the USA side. You can also get off the boat and have the boat pick you up later and you can hike or you could do an overnight camp trip but be prepared to plan that in advance because you have to clear customs and all of that stuff. Number three is Cameron Falls. This is probably the easiest tourist site to access. It's just a waterfall right in the town. The cool thing about this waterfall is it is rumored to turn pink due to the minerals in the rock. I unfortunately never got to see it. Apparently it turns pink after heavy rainfall. So if you're in Waterton and it just starts downpouring, just run to Cameron Falls and you might see it turn pink. Number four is Bertha Lake and Falls. Definitely another one of the really popular hikes in Waterton. This is a great hike to do if you want to do it by yourself because it's highly trafficked if you're scared of bears. I really like this hike because it has three stages. So it's kind of, there's something for everyone. The first stage is you can just hike up to the falls and then hike back down, or you can go up to the falls and then go up to the lake. It's all switchbacks pretty much from the falls up to the lake but it's really not that bad. And then if you want to be very adventurous, you can actually hike all the way up to the peak. I've never done it. I know some people that did. I don't know if it's kind of off the beaten track, but it's definitely worth looking into. And a round trip up to Bertha Lake is about 10 kilometers. Number five is the border hike. I honestly don't know what 
the actual name of this hike is. But you start out the same way that you would go up to Bertha Lake. Instead of turning right at the first lookout, you just go straight down to Bertha Bay and you continue, it's probably about another hour and a half until you're at the border. It's a super moderate hike. It's more of like a walk. The trail goes along the water, so it's just some incredible views. And it's super cool. When you get to the border, you can like put one arm in Canada and one arm in the USA. And yeah, it's really cool. I really recommend it. It's really hard to actually find this hike online. So I don't actually know how many kilometers it is round trip, but I think it took us round trip like around three hours. Number six is high tea and the Bellman speech at the Prince of Wales Hotel. You don't have to be a guest to come experience this. It's just done in the lobby. So in the evenings, you can order food and drinks from the bar. And in the day from one to five, they do afternoon tea. It's actually one of the most affordable high tea experiences that I've heard of. It's only $30 per person. The view in itself is worth the price. The view from the Prince of Wales lobby is iconic. It overlooks Upper Tan Waterton Upper Waterton Lake and all the servers wear kilts so it's just a very unique experience that I would highly recommend. You get to try a wide variety of teas and you get a three tier tray with scones, some little sweets, and some finger sandwiches. I actually used to make the sweets for high tea when I worked there so I can definitely guarantee that you do not need to eat before if you're getting one portion for yourself. It's definitely filling but if you just want to go and nibble and have like a light snack, I would recommend get just getting like a one person tray to split between two people. Every night at 8 p.m. there's a Bellman speech, so they tell you all about the history of Waterton Lakes National Park and the history of this 93 year old hotel. And there may or may not be some ghost stories, so you will have to come and find that out for yourself. The Prince of Wales also has a wide variety of international staff, people like me that are just working seasonal and traveling. So come in and meet people from Australia all the way to Europe and all around the world. Number seven is kayak around Upper Waterton Lake. You can rent kayaks, canoes, and paddle boards from Blackenston and Company and Paths Waterton. And I think it's Blackenston and Company that has a 10 person paddleboard. So if you have like 10 friends, definitely try that out. I never tried it, but I watch people do it and it's hilarious. Oh, I'm sweating. I'm sitting right beside the heater and it's super fucking hot. <sighs> Number eight is Red Rock Canyon. Due to the fires in 2017, the road is closed to motorized vehicles, but you can still walk and bike up it. That's actually a good thing to mention. Since the fires happened in 2017, a lot of the hikes and roads and stuff that were open before then have been shut down. They're working on them so that I think they'll be reopening in the next few years, so keep your eye on that before going. If you go up to Red Rock Canyon at the end of June, it's peak time for wildflowers, so it's just such an amazing time. You're biking down this deserted road and then there's fields of wildflowers everywhere with mountains. It's so beautiful. So if you can do it at the end of June, I highly recommend it. You can also rent electric bikes from Pat's Waterton for more of a relaxed journey up. Number nine is horseback riding. So Alpine Stables is the one that we did it with. They do like a variety of different guided tours. One, actually they take you camping overnight in the back country. That sounds super cool. It's a little pricey, but I highly recommend it. I did the two hour tour and you go horseback riding through these like different terrains and it's really, really cool. It's so beautiful to the views. Number 10 is Vimy Peak. This is probably the most popular peak or the most trafficked peak, hike peak, hike to a peak, hike to a peak <laughs> in Waterton. It is a peak, so it is more challenging than the other hikes I've mentioned. And it's about a 19 kilometer round trip hike, but the views on top are incredible. There's a few ways to access the trail. The most popular and easiest way to access it is to take the boat that you take to Crypt Lake. You can also take it to Bimmy, or you can access it by the road. It's kind of confusing to describe how to access it and kind of how to. So I will link a post from summitpost.org and they have a good explanation on how to access it. If you are wanting to access it from the road, be prepared to walk about two hours before you even start inclining on the mountain. I actually didn't end up doing this hike, but I really wish I did. So I will post a couple pictures here 
of when John did it. <laughs> a couple last things to mention is buy like snacks and groceries and supplies in Pinter Creek before going to Waterton because there is no grocery store. If you're looking to have a beer and listen to some live music, definitely check out Thirsty Bear. They also have some pretty good food as well. And it's a very Canadian themed bar. There's like a sign on the wall that says A, there's a big bear painted. So it's a very Canadian experience. Be prepared for all weather going to Waterton or really any Rocky Mountains in Canada. Definitely pack some pants, even if it's the middle of summer. <laughs> Waterton is the second windiest place in Canada too, so keep that in mind. And don't forget your bear spray because there is a lot of wildlife and a lot of bears. If you are there for more than three days, I highly recommend that you will see a bear. So that wraps up my top 10 things to do in Waterton Lakes National Park. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it inspires you to go check out this quiet, beautiful town. You will not be disappointed. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you would like to see more videos like this. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time.